In the last video, we figured out the currents, resistive current, inductive current, combined them together Pythagorously and got the total current, figured out the impedance. Now we're gonna deal with power, apparent power measured in volt amps. That's what the circuit needs to provide. True power across the resistive component. That's the working power, the real power, doing the real work, the heat, the light, the motion. And then we have the reactive power, volt amps reactive, in this case, from an inductor, a reactive component. And that power is stored in the inductor and then released and stored and released. It's not doing any actual work, okay? But the circuit still needs to provide it. And what did I draw down here? Last time we had the resistive current in phase with the voltage and the inductive current 90 degrees out of phase. What I took was the sum of the two. And it is neither in phase with the voltage nor out of phase 90 degrees. It's somewhere in the middle. The resistive current tried to pull it back in phase. The inductive current tried to pull it out to 90. And because there's a little bit more inductive current, then there is resistive current, it's pulled a little more out of phase, probably closer to 90 than it is to zero. But we're going to figure that out right here. We'll figure that out from the triangle and see how that relates. Because power-wise, what we have is when both voltage and current are positive, E times I, I've got positive power. When they're both negative, E times I, both negatives, result in positive power. But when one is positive and one is negative, I have this negative power. A positive times a negative number is negative. That's negative power. So that's the area of, of wasted power. I've got the positive power minus the negative power, and what do we end up with? And in this case, it's, it's net positive. So no problem, that's due to the resistor. If it were purely an inductor, it would be half positive, half negative. No real work would be done. Okay, let's figure the numbers. How do we figure them out? Ohm's law. Power is a function of volts and amps, or E squared uh, divided by ohms, or amps squared times ohms, right? We can use any Ohm's law. So let's Punch them in, E times I is probably the simplest for power. Let's punch them in for all three of these and figure out what our power numbers are. And we get these numbers. 477.6 volt amps. True power measured in watts, 288. And volt amps reactive. I put the little L because they're provided by an inductor, not overly important in this class, but as we start to combine the components, we'll want to know what power comes from what component. And that's 381.6 VARs. Let's draw the triangle for those. What will that triangle look like? So we have it drawn this way. We know that the true power, because it's from the resistive component, will be on the horizontal line. Resistive components always on the horizontal line because they're in phase, voltage and current. The reactive component, 90 degrees out. So we put the VARs vertical. And the VA is the vector sum of both. So if you look at your formula sheet, let's take a look. it would be Pythagoras. Your apparent power is the watts squared times your vars squared. Same way we come up with the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse always represents the total circuit values. So we have our power. Remember power factor? That efficiency of how much of the power that I'm putting into the circuit is actually doing real work. It's a ratio of watts divided by volt amps. And if we take 288 divided by 477.6, what do we end up with? 
little over 60%. So of the power we're putting into this circuit, a little over 60% of it is doing real work. Okay. And there's now this relationship between my power factor and angle theta. It brings in your sines and cosines and all those things, because what did we essentially do? If I want to find this angle for power factor, we took this side over this side. That's my adjacent side over my hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse, that's cosine. But if I know the angle, I can get cosine of that angle will be, give me the ratio of this side to this side. But right now, I know that ratio, 60% or 0 0.603 is the ratio. So how do we work that backwards? Here's how we do it. Regular, if I knew the angle, I would just do cosine and the angle and get adjacent over hypotenuse. I would get that ratio of those sides. We've talked about proportional triangles. I could have done this with the current. However, I know the ratio. That ratio adjacent divided by hypotenuse is 60.3% or written decimally, that would be 0 0.603. And if I were to do cosine negative one, which is basically inverse cosine or arc cosine, you would hit second function and then the cosine button and you would see this. Second function cosine button, that's what you see. You put in the ratio or you can do a divider. You can do 288 divided by 477.6. We know what that is already. Close the parentheses if you want, hit equals. And what do you get? 52.9 degrees. That's that angle. We can tell that it's gonna be more than 45 because this side is longer than this. If they were both equal, it would be 45. So we can kind of guess, is it gonna be less than 45 or more than 45? And sure enough, it's a little bit more. And what does that mean back here? The total current is shifted 52 degrees, 52.9 degrees, the current is lagging the voltage. And there we have it. Our power numbers and how they relate to power factor, the efficiency, how much of the power I'm putting in is doing real work, and my angle theta. Could do this for any of the triangles. And that relates to my sine waves and that the current at the total circuit value is gonna be shifted 52.9 degrees. We've stressed that point. Here they're in phase, here they're out of phase by 90 degrees. But the combination is somewhere between zero and 90 degrees, somewhere in the middle. One last point. This triangle I drew up, but I had the current triangle facing down. Okay. It just has to do with as we add in capacitors down the road, we've got to figure out which power triangle goes up and which power triangle goes down. So generally speaking, and you may see it different in some texts, but generally speaking, we're drawing the inductive triangles, inductive power triangles pointing up. And we'll find out the capacitive ones next AC will point down. But Remember, the triangle that points down in this class with RL circuits is your current triangle in parallel. Had to do with voltage being the reference and across an inductor, the current hanging behind 90 degrees. But when we get to power, inductive ones we point up.